fluffy and white he is. I cannot get over how he looks the day after his bath. He's gorgeous. Clover and I are in Davis Square this morning doing a little walking, a little shopping. So this is Davis Square in Somerville, a town outside of Boston, uh, close to Cambridge actually. Cambridge, I believe, is like a mile that way. <laughs> Maybe even half a mile. Clover and I are here. We are probably gonna hit the plant shop again because I have an addiction. Davis Square is all decorated for the holidays. It smells like uh, burritos right now and I'm getting very hungry. <laughs> Check out this place, it's called Dragon Pizza. I, I haven't heard of it before, but it's got all those like cool bike wheels as the decoration, that's awesome. Um, it's a great recycling of those and uh, it looks pretty cool. I don't know, I'm kind of, I must be super hungry because all these places look so good to me. But I look in the window of this place called Caramel. Because, I don't know, macaron, I want one. Oh my goodness. Aren't those beautiful? Wow. There's something in there. They're opening at 11. Wow. Beautiful macarons. Oh. Do you guys like macarons? This is like really the only like sort of sweets that I like. I like it crispy, um, light cookie like this. When we were in Paris, I got a bunch of macarons and they were delicious. Did you enjoy your walk? I enjoy walking you. Did you enjoy your little trip at the store? You got a treat in there? You got a peanut butter treat? Are you satisfied? I know we didn't go to the park, but I think you'll be okay, okay? Oh my gosh, plant haul time. All right, we're back. I was very bad, but also I don't care. I got some plants and I'll show them to you. I don't have kids, okay? I just have a dog, I work independently. I collect plants. It's my hobby. I enjoy it. Let a girl live. Leave me alone. I know I bought plants last week. But I'm okay with it. <laughs> no, seriously. I go through periods where I like, I'm like going crazy getting plants. Um, and then I like don't buy plants for like a year. It's really weird. So, um, I was very excited to see a couple of my wishlist plants and then one like mystery plant. So I brought home one plant that I've been so looking forward to um, over the last like year. I was actually gonna order it off Etsy, but I didn't wanna pay the shipping. The shipping from Etsy is so ridiculous, but um, I found it in store, so super happy to have it. I'm very, I'm, I'm thrilled. Okay, here we go. First plant. First plant is a little um, Epipremnum. This, oh, it's Pearls and Jade. Is this Pearls and Jade? There, I know there's one called Enjoy, which is sort of similar, but has slightly different variegation. But um, I was, this was on my wish list. It's called um, Epipremnum Pearl, uh, Pearls and Jade, uh, also known as like Jade, Jade, Pearls and Jade Pothos, I guess. It's very pretty and it's super, super cute. I think the leaves stay kind of small and petite like this, but isn't it pretty? Um, I haven't, I've never had one of these before and I really like, um, I'm really liking the uh, the genus Epipremnum anyway. So I've, I've I'm very, happy to have it it's super cute it looks like it's going to be a great grower so we'll find an appropriate pot for that one um then the next one this one's been on my wish list for a while it's another hoya i have a really a, i have an obsession with hoyas now i didn't get the hoya hype when like i was watching plant videos i was like why is everyone cuckoo over hoyas and i got a couple and now i know they're just so easy and so beautiful. This is Hoya Australis, but it's variegated. I think they had a couple of, a few Hoya Australis there that were just green, but this one's variegated. And uh, it says Hoya Australis Lisa. Okay, so that's the variety. Look at this. 
look at this and it's plant it's a uh, pet friendly so if you um, are curious to what this one isn't like gonna be super toxic if your pet sort of nibbles on your plants like a couple other specimens I brought home last week but isn't it beautiful and I love Hoyas because they have these waxy sort of leaves that are um, they almost feel artificial and they're just super easy super easy they're uh, mealybug magnets though so I'm, I'm I keep a very careful careful watch over all my Hoyas I haven't had any mealies on any of my Hoyas but we'll, we'll knock on wood um, anyway, this is Hoya Australis Lisa. Super cute. Oh, some of the soil fell down on the counter. This one was a mystery one. So it says Philodendron Assorted. And I asked the, the salesperson working there, I'm like, what kind a philodendron is this? Oh my god, the soil is falling on the counter. I just, I'm not a, not a very good at showing plants. So check out the leaf shape here. And obviously this um, plant is pretty juvenile, so I don't think that this is like the final leaf form, but like you can see like it's got, in, the baby ones have these like little lobes, but then this one looks sort of more mature where it's got the lobes coming out like that. And then this one, like the lobes are like almost, they're all separate, but look at the shape, isn't that interesting? I don't know what kind of philodendron this is, but I'm anxious to find out. If anyone knows, please let me know down in the comment below because this is a mystery plant and I don't know what it is. But I'm, I'm anxious to see how it matures, but the juvenile form is really cute, isn't that interesting? And the last plant, has been on my wish list for at least a year and I haven't seen one in person and I saw it and snapped it up. I couldn't believe how inexpensive it was. And well, inexpensive, I mean, it wasn't inexpensive, but it was like, I just, I'm spoiling myself this week because I'm sad. I've had some, some, some stuff going on. Y'all know I got stuff going on. So we're, 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 we're coping with plants. Anyway, here she is. Da, 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 da. It's Monstera Spa Peru. That's the name of this particular Monstera variety. I don't think, I think, is that the official name now? Like it's, it's Monstera, oh, this one says Karstenianum, uh, Car, Karstenianum name. I don't think that that's the official name of this plant. And I don't think it is. I will, I will look it up because I think that that's like a name somebody just sprinkled on there, but I think the official name is just Monstera Spa Peru because I think that they just plucked it out of Peru and didn't give it a name, but I will double check. Anyway, the reason I wanted it is this is a, uh, I've been sort of very interested in Monstera as a genus. Um, I have like the Monstera Deliciosa and I have Monstera Edinsonii, but I also have Monstera Siltipicana, which has the most beautiful leaves um, I've ever seen. I think it's only the juvenile form. I feel like when the plant gets mature, it doesn't have that beautiful leaf look anymore. So I, I want to keep it small, but, um, this plant, look at the leaves. Are they, are they not incredible? Like it looks like some kind of reptile, um, form. And they're, they're pretty, so these leaves are pretty meaty. They're pretty substantial. They're like, you can, they've got some, some heft to them, but like, I am, up, I am obsessed with it. Like, look at it, look at it, look at it. I am so happy to have found one in person. It needs a water, I, it feels really like dry. Um, but this one was kind of expensive. This was $25 and this is a climbing Monstera. Well, all the, all Monsteras want to climb. They're all um, epiphytic plants and oh maybe it is a little it's okay, okay it's a little aerial route here to to climb on things and this looks like a new little growth point here so i'll be observing this very carefully to see how it grows um i don't know if i'm going to get any growth out of it um for the rest of the year you know because it's the growing season is pretty much over i mean i could probably trick it <laughs> but i don't i don't know but anyway i'm very excited to have it look at it isn't is that not a stunner i think it's a stunner Look at the leaves. I'm just gonna stare all day at the leaves. They're just so beautiful. I love the look of, I love the reptile look of them. Ugh. 
Oh, it's sexy. Anyway, those are the four babies I brought home. <laughs> gonna give them a big wash. I'm gonna, I really wanna know what this is. I wanna know. Isn't it so interesting? I can't get over it. Um, gonna give them a good wash, pick out some uh, cash pose for them, and then I will uh, take a break for lunch, I guess. See you later. So I just shot two videos today that I'm gonna be uploading at a separate time. And I, I'm going to just talk for the rest of the video. So, um, so I have been asked in a couple of videos, I'm going to answer questions that I haven't answered either. I like didn't, or I forgot, or I just didn't have time or whatever. Um, so I'm going to do that really quickly. And a lot of you asked which plant YouTubers I like the most. So I'm going to tell you some of my favorite online creators here on the platform that I like that talk about houseplants. So the first one is Summer Rain Oaks. I like her a lot because she's a nerd. And, and that that makes me so happy. She's very concerned about like proper nomenclature of, of plants. And she, uh, did she study botany? I believe she did. She studied some kind of science in college. I will definitely uh, look that up and put it on the screen or something like that. But she's very knowledgeable and she's very matter of fact when she talks about houseplants, which I really like. And she is just a wonderful presenter of information. And she wrote a great book called How to Make a Plant Love You. I purchased the audio version of that book, but it's very good if you're looking for like basic houseplant care information. Um, it's a great, it's a great book and she's great. And I really appreciate her here on YouTube. Another one I watch is Nick Pileggi. I love Nick Pileggi so much. He's just so down to earth when talking about houseplant care and he's got a great sense of humor and I love the way that he loves his plants and he talks about them and um and you know and we all you know as 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 much as we'd like to think that we're like really good plant parents a lot of us do struggle <laughs> with some of these plants Nick Pileggi makes you feel better about like you know having not succeeded with a certain plant you know so it's um He's great and I highly recommend his channel as well. I also really like Kaylee Ellen. She's uh, from the UK and she's fantastic. She's very down to earth and she used to be a, like a game, gaming programmer, I think. So she's also kind of a nerd, but also she's very cool. Um, she owns a rare plant shop in the UK and she's very knowledgeable. And uh, she's great. She's great to watch and she's very entertaining. Who else do I like? Oh, Carmen Whitehead, Carmen, girl. I love your channel. I love that you can tell, you know how you can tell some people are just like good people, like they're like good people. I can tell Carmen's like good people. Carmen lives in Arizona, I think. So the environment there is very different. So I love to see the plants that thrive in that environment. I could not have um, like lots, of, I don't think lots of succulents and stuff. I don't have like Southern facing windows. I have like West facing windows. Um, so I just like the different plants and you know, my plants couldn't hack it outside uh, in the winter months. So I just love to see different um, climates for, and different plants in different climates. And she's just a wonderful, warm creator and fantastic, knowledgeable person and love her very much. I do also really like um, Harley G. I like Harley G too. She makes really knowledgeable, um, entertaining plant videos. She's very cute. And, uh, yeah, so those are my favorite, like, plant tubers. Oh, and I love Plantarina. Uh, Am Amanda from Plantarina. She's great. She's kind of the person that, like, I would want to hang out with, you know? I think she's from New York. She lives in New York, and she has a plant shop that's, I think it's based down in Florida. Um, the plants she sells are very... I, I expensive, but I bought a plant from her a couple of times and they have been wonderful. I bought my Monster out in Sony Eye and my, uh, I got a Tenanthi uh, Burley Marxii and both of them are, do are still doing really well. So um, her plants are very good quality. They came really beautifully packaged. So um, you get what you pay for sometimes. Um, but Amanda is like very animated. She's very full of life. She's very realistic. She doesn't take herself too seriously and she is just a wonderful warm being here on the YouTubes. And those are my favorite plant tubers. There it is. Let me pull up some like questions I never answered. I feel like there's questions I never answered. Okay. The first question I know I never answered before bringing up any of my analytics or comments or like that is the what lip color am I wearing? Like 
like right now. And I'm gonna go, I'm gonna tell you. This is a YSL, like what it's called like a water stain. Look at we're a beauty channel now. I think this, I wanna say at the bottom of this, I wanna say it's like 603 is the color. You can pause it and look, but um it's a really beautiful like pinky color. I'll take out the wand. Clover, if you drink my coffee, we're gonna have words. All right, we'll take out the wand. I'll show you the wand. So it's got this like paddle wand color. It's kind of a pinky magenta, but a little bright, but on the lips, it looks really nice. And uh, I'll put some more on. It does stain. Um, so if you want like lasting lip color that you don't have to, you know, touch up forever, this is really nice. Uh, I have three different colors of these and I think I'll buy more when I run out. I really like this. It's not like a, um, it's not a drying formula. It's really, but it's not like moisturizing either. I really like it. It's like the only lip color I have right now. I have three of these and like, that's it. I have also Clinique Black Honey. That's also what I use, but this and Clinique Black Honey, that's pretty much it. That's all. I got rid of all the rest. Okay, I think there's a way I can, oh no. Help responded, contains questions. I can like, I can filter the comments on my iPhone now based on if they contain a question. So, um, oh, interesting. This is from yesterday. Joan said, so, someday you share how you keep your vocal cords and sinuses healthy if you use humidifiers and diffusers and how you keep them clean and maybe certain herbal teas as much. I've been living for Texas, in Texas for 35 years. It's in the bane of my existence as far as allergies go. You know what, Joan, I am, I would definitely be willing to do a separate video on that because it would be a whole separate video. Maybe that would, wouldn't be something that would be great for this channel, but I'll shoot it anyway. Um, I'll, long story short, I do have like a maintenance routine for my own person because I have sinus issues uh, and I have, I, I'm affected a lot when the pressure decreases. <laughs> Does the pressure increase or decrease before it rains? I keep forgetting. I want to say the pressure decreases like high pressure is like nice weather and low pressure is rainy weather is that right anyway when the pressure changes when barometric pressure changes i get a sinus headache like right here and it's the worst um so i do occasionally use sinus draining uh sinus irrigation uh, you have to use distilled water for that because you could get the like the, the brain eating amoeba it's not good and i also use um what is that like nettle that is in um, slippery elm? That's what I was looking for. Anything with slippery elm in it is gonna be great for your voice. And general overall vocal hygiene is going to be speaking in the part of your voice where it's the most comfortable, uh, warming up before you start seriously singing. I am a terrible person about this sometimes. Um, and then uh, using humidifiers. I use humidifiers in the winter months, in the summer months, and in the spring months. It's, it's pretty humid around here, so I don't have to use humidifiers. But in the wintertime, I do use humidifiers. At night, I stay, uh, I close my door when I shower <laughs> to take full advantage of the steam. And I also do use a personal steamer uh, before singing. But my teacher has informed me that a nebulizer may be a good idea. So we'll look into that, but uh, that'll be that's basically the long and short of it, but it'll be a separate video. I know you shared this a million times, but where did you get the plant shelves? The plant shelves are from Ikea. I'm not gonna pronounce the name of the shelves because things from Ikea, I don't, very tricky. However, this is the, they're, they're super cheap. They're like 50 bucks and they're glass, an opaque bottom and a top, and they're great. I have, I have attached grow lights to them. They're fantastic. They work great for plants because they let the light through. They're, they're awesome. I mean, the, the bad side is you gotta go to Ikea and put them together but they're very good. Oh, the intro music. Okay, I get asked about the intro music for Vlogmas all the time, and it is, uh, it, the song is called Christmas In My Heart, and it's the original artist of the song is Loving Caliber, but it's been remixed by an artist named Dylan Sitz, Dylan Sitz. So it's a remix of a Loving Caliber, a Loving Caliber song. Christmas In My Heart is like one of my favorite Christmas songs ever. Oh, the plant stand my Diffenbachia is in. I got it from Marshalls. Marshalls and Home Goods and TJ Maxx, whatever. Those are the best places to find affordable plant stands. Cause let me tell you, plant stands are flipping expensive. I don't know what the deal is, but like when you're on like West Elm website or whatever, you're looking at plant stands, they're like $200, $300. Like I don't want to spend that kind of money on a plant stand. 
go to, I mean, it takes hunting to go to TJ Maxx and Marshalls and stuff, but you will find very nice plant stands at Home Goods, TJ Maxx, PJ Maxx, or TK Maxx, I think if you're in the UK or whatever. Good stuff. Oh, somebody asked about wiping my old phones. So if you have an old cell phone, you can do a factory reset on it and it'll pretty much delete all of your like app information and it to like do, take everything out. You might have make sure you take out your SIM card on the phone. Um, if you have a uh, an Android, I think this is gonna be easier. If you have an iPhone, I think it'll be harder, but anyone in an Apple store can help you. So I suggest taking your phone to a, uh, a many, like a, an Apple store or whatever to, and they'll help you just get rid of all that stuff on there. Oh, are plastic bins the way to best store to, the best way to store leather shoes? And what is the best cleaning solution for those beloved comfortable shoes? I'd love a video on that. Interesting. You know what? Um leather um you want it you can store it in like that sh you know a, a plastic shoe box, but it just can't be an airtight plastic shoe box cuz you want a little airflow inside of things natural materials, things like fur, leather, suede, um, those kinds of materials just because you don't they they don't do well in an air tight container so um there's also like these drop front shoe boxes that are great that are not airtight where your leather goods are going to do okay generally natural fabrics and materials you want to stay away from like airtight plastic situations but like just a regular shoe box where air is coming in is is totally fine like and some shoe boxes they make with with holes already in them so that they get proper ventilation okay last one someone asked if this is our forever home or temporary home so if i had my way <laughs> i would probably i would never move again my husband says that we will definitely stay here for a while but he eventually would like to move again probably we'll see what happens i don't like moving we've moved probably six times in the last five years and i'm over it so i would like to stay here for a good long while five years ten years so because the longest that i ever lived in an apartment here since i the longest i've ever lived in any place in my entire life <laughs> this is coming from a military brat was when I first moved up here to go to grad school. Well, I, I had been living here to go to college, but I would, when I moved across town to go to graduate school, I lived in that apartment for seven years, and that was the longest I had ever lived in any one place, and I was devastated when I had to move. <laughs> it was the worst situation possible, but I would like to stay here a really long time. I really like this house. I love, the I love my neighborhood so much. It's lovely everyone here is lovely our neighbors are lovely and clover really likes it here so i just want to hang out as long as possible but you know if we were to see something that was larger and maybe we had our own i i don't know we but i this is our this is our for a while home at least right now i think but i don't i just i don't So we were just talking about how we haven't decorated the Christmas tree yet, and it's it's oh, October. No, it's not. It's December fifteenth, and we have not decorated the Christmas tree yet, because um, I work early morning hours and my husband works California hours, <laughs> and by the time I'm finished cooking dinner and eating it, it's like nine o'clock, and I'm ready to go to bed, and he's just coming up from his office downstairs and we're like two ships passing in the night. So there hasn't really been an occasion to do the tree. So I'm hoping that maybe tonight we can do the tree. I've got some mulling spices for mulled wine. As I'm hoping tonight, I don't know, but I'll let you know. Anyway, Clover and I are gonna chill out for the afternoon and thanks for watching and I will see you tomorrow. Clover, say goodbye to the people. You're in your little bed. Oh, before I go, more plant drama. So, I'm still, I'm still trying to convince myself whether this is Trio Star, Stromanthe Trio Star, or Magic Star. I want to say Magic Star because of this, the these splotches of variegation. Because I have a Trio Star, and the Trio Star doesn't have these splotches. It's just sectoral variegation. But then we've got this leaf that has this sectoral variegation, which means there are different sections of the plant that are white like that. 
but I'm, at, I'm thinking this leaf is just an exception. I don't know, I wanna say this is Magic Star just because of the splotchiness of this variegation. Because look, here is my Trio Star and the variegation is very different. It's like sectoral sort of very, it's not, it's not spotty, splotchy. It's more sectoral. Like look at that. That is like section here, section here. There's no splotches on these green pieces, right? There's no splotches on the green pieces at all. Some of these leaves aren't very impressive. <laughs> so this leaf has very nice sectoral variegation. And this leaf down here, these are some of the newer leaves. So this one's definitely Stromanthi Trio Star, but I don't, the other one is Magic Star? I don't know. Oh, there's a new leaf coming. Look at her, look at her. Okay, it was a plant heavy vlog. I'm, I'm gonna go. All right, bye. <laughs>